my colleague from Ohio who, to, for yielding to me. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you. Senator from Ohio. Thank you. And I, I always laud and so appreciate the, the principal leadership of the senior senator from Rhode Island who never would have done what just happened on the floor when we were in the minority. I mean, Jack Reed is always there for the troops, is always there for our national security, and I, I join my colleagues in showing our appreciation. I know the presiding officer from New Mexico thinks the same thing. Um, <clears throat> Mr. President, this weekend, we celebrated Small Business Saturday, where Ohioans and people around the country show their support for local businesses in their communities by shopping local for holiday gifts. Small business, their workers drive this economy. There's always talk on this floor about small business, but the focus is rarely in this body actually on small business um, and their workers. They create jobs and economic growth in our communities, in the heartland, in small towns and overlooked neighborhoods, places that often don't get a lot of outside investment. The stakeholders in these businesses aren't nameless, fameless, faceless shareholders. They're our neighbors, our family members, the people you see at church and at the grocery store. And they are, they are virtual, they are vital to our economic recovery. It's why we passed the Bipartisan Paycheck Protection Program last year. It's why Democrats and President Biden expanded it in the American Rescue Plan. Last week, I asked Ohioans on social media to tell us about their favorite local businesses to support this holiday shopping season, businesses that go above and beyond to help their community. This was a little bit, Mr. President, and I've gone to the floor on this before, and, and you and I have talked about this. When I post on my website, what did the child tax credit mean to your family? And the effusive outpouring and excitement from so many people saying this should be the role of government, this is what really matters. That's what we found when we posted asking people to share your stories about favorite local businesses. I want to share a few of them. Beth talked about Mootown Creamery in Berea. She said they're so involved in the community they never say no when help is needed. Robin gave a shout out, and that's in Northeast Ohio near Cleveland. Robin gave a shout out to Snazzy's in Oxford for local arts. That's in Southwest Ohio, north of Cincinnati, the home of Miami University. I would add Berea is the home of, of Baldwin Wallace College too. Sarah mentioned Sunset Bistro in Bowling Green. They not only support their local community, they're devoted to honoring our veterans, another community with a large, a big state university in Northwest Ohio. Heather wrote about Let's Eat Cake in Urbana. She said owner Tina is always doing something for the Downtown Business Association and the greater community. Donna said, I can't say enough about Scott, the owner of Salad Crazy. Scott goes above and beyond to make the city of Avon Lake, a city on Lake Erie, uh, just east of Lorraine, a great place to live and raise our children. Lori has said, Polka Art and Photography in Grove City in Central Ohio does amazing digital printings and photography. She restores old photographs into digital paintings. Tia said, Gemini Gems and Creations in Lancaster, a, a, a small city southeast of Columbus. Wonderful people who started selling out of their homes and during town events, out of their home and during town events, and I now finally have their own shop. Teresa mentioned Chris Fultz Sign Company, Fultz Signs in his pizza place, Blue Lick General in Lima. Uh, Lima just swore in uh, this week a new mayor, uh, Sharita Smith, and uh, the mayor of Dayton, my friend Nan Whaley, attended the swearing in. Adam mentioned the Copper Penny Salon in Pettisville. Vicki mentioned the Charm Farmhouse in Wellington. She said they take food drives and donate to those in town who directly help our community. They survived, shut down, and thrive still. Think about that. They survived and they thrive. This pandemic hit small businesses hard. For so many of them, they're still paying their workers and serving their communities because of PPP, because of our work through the American Rescue Plan to get people vaccinated. PPP has helped Ohio businesses survive. Vaccines are bringing back customers, allowing these small businesses to thrive again. The bipartisan infrastructure plan the president signed just last month is going to mean investment earlier this month, excuse me, it's going to mean investment in these businesses, local communities. People in Ohio and across the country remember how after the last economic crisis in 2008 and 9, the biggest co corporations recovered, they always do, Mr. President, while large swaths of the country were left behind. Many of these same communities have watched for decades as factories closed, as investment dries up, as storefronts were boarded over. 
We can't make that mistake again, and we're not making that mistake. We're investing in rebuilding roads and bridges and bus and rail systems to revitalize downtowns. We know businesses can't survive on their own. They need safe streets and sidewalks. They need other businesses around. They need bus stops nearby. They need customers with money in their pockets. It's part of the American Rescue Plan. As I said earlier, we passed the largest tax cut for working families ever. 92% of families in Ohio who have children under 18, 92% of those families will get at least a $3,000 a year tax cut. It's essential that this Congress, that this Senate, uh, extend that tax cut for at least another year. It's giving millions of Ohio families that a tax cut every single month, $250 or $300 per child every single month. We need to make sure they continue. We need this holiday season to commit to shopping local. And in the Senate, let's commit to protecting small business, putting small businesses and workers at the center of our economy. The workers who shared these, the Ohioans who shared these stories know the vibrancy and the dynamism and the diversity of working class towns in neighborhoods that Senator Portman, who's in, in the chamber this evening, that we, that we represent. We need to get to work to invest in them. We need to get to work to work to ensure that these places, Ohio's main streets, America's main streets, are at the center of a better economy. And Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that when the Senate completes its business today, it adjourn until 10 a.m. Tuesday, November 30th, that following the prayer and pledge, the morning hour be deemed expired. The journal be approved to date. The time for the two leaders be reserved for their use later in the day and morning business be closed. That upon the conclusion of morning business, the Senate resume consideration of H.R. 4350. Further, that the Senate recess from 12.30 until 2 p.m. to allow for the weekly caucus meetings. Is there, no. I'm sorry, 2.15 to allow for the weekly caucus meetings. Without objection. Thank you. If there's no further business, uh, I ask that it stand adjourned under the previous order following the remarks of my colleague from Ohio. Without objection.